A couple of years ago, the EV segment wasn't all that varied, and it was mainly based around smaller cars that were entering into this flourishing new market, but couldn't kind of execute the technology that was required to provide an everyday mobility solution. That has all changed, however, and these days, there's a greater variety of EVs than ever, and there's loads to choose from. And these are three cars that currently appear in the new EV market. Now, we know that these aren't direct rivals, and that isn't the point of today's video. No, these show the kind of variety that you can currently get in the EV market. And if you are looking for a family-friendly battery-powered car, why should you be looking at these? And what kind of positives do they have? Let's find out just what each of these cars has to offer. Let's kick things off with the MG5. Now, MG has established a great reputation in recent years for creating value for money focused EVs that really don't break the bank. And the MG5 also manages to claim to be one of the few estate electric cars on sale today. That means that from the offset, it's got a slightly more practical focus than other cars on the market. This new version has got a fresh design with a sleek front end, which looks particularly futuristic. But you've got to remember, that the fundamentals of the MG5, such as its spaciousness and practicality focused, were present on the previous generation. So you can still get great used examples that have the same core ethos as this new one. Next, we have the Skoda Enyaq, which is already proving a firm favorite in the UK's car market. It's got all of the features that you'd want from a Skoda, solid build quality, loads of standard equipment, and a really large boot. But of course it throws in that EV powertrain too, with a decent amount of range and the option of all-wheel drive in certain models. And finally, we have the Mercedes EQA, which takes the place as the smallest electric SUV in Mercedes lineup. As you'd expect from Mercedes, there's a premium feel both inside and out, while there's loads of standard equipment with some really cool technology features to check out inside. For a value oriented model, the MG5 is really impressive inside. I think the fit and finish is excellent actually, and all the materials are by and large very good. There are some scratchier plastics here and there, but they are hard wearing and they're gonna stand up to loads of abuse. You, all cars get a standard screen in the middle and it's got all the functionality you could want as well as Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So if you're not too happy with the way the screen looks, just connect your phone and relay your smartphone that way. I think the ergonomics are good overall and the rotary controller for the gears is actually quite simple to use. Uh, I like that you've got a storage area and here with a rubberized mat on it so it stops those loose items from rolling around. The only thing that has stuck out at me is these blue accent points which I get are meant to be kind of EV-ish but I think they look a bit like that plastic trim uh, that you have to pull off before you use a new piece of technology like a camera or a smartphone. So I keep thinking that it's going to come off of my hand. But apart from that, I think it's a very pleasant place to be, particularly given that, as I've mentioned, it is value focused. In terms of overall spaciousness, the MG5 does brilliantly too. There's plenty of space in the back. And though the seats are quite flat and quite deep, I think they're going to be comfortable for long journeys. Headroom is also really good, as is knee and feet room. So for larger families, I think you're going to have plenty of space for everyone inside. Then when it comes to the boot, it might be down on capacity of some of its larger rivals, but it's nice and square and easy to access, and you get some netted sections at the side. Plus, it's worth remembering that the MG5 also features vehicle-to-load technology, which means that you can open up the port at the front, and with an adapter, you can charge up your domestic appliances. So, in theory, you could make a cup of tea with a kettle up there, or plug in a television if you really wanted to, and it just runs off the car's inbuilt battery. The interior of the Skoda Enyaq is one that I've got quite up to speed with because I've actually been living with this car for a couple of months now. And the things that stand out to me are just how simple and easy to use everything is. I would still like physical controls for the heating and ventilation on the middle screen. And I haven't had too many issues with flakiness of the technology because that's been reported in other Volkswagen Group electric cars. The screen has faltered once or twice, but I haven't really had any major issues whatsoever. Elsewhere, it's the build quality that shines through. There's really solid materials throughout. Everything feels really nicely and sturdily put together. And I particularly like all the heated elements. So you've got heated steering wheel and heated seats, and you can pre-condition them uh, via a smartphone app so you can get the car up to temperature before you even get in on a cold day. And I think that's really useful. There's plenty of storage options too. There's some nice sections in the middle and some deep door bins. Although I would like the cup holders to be a little bit larger because you can't get a full-size cup in there when you're on the move. 
There's loads of space in the rear too, leg and headroom, both excellent. And again, that uh, sense of build quality is carried through to the back too. And in terms of boot space, the Enyaq does excellently. It's nice and square. And of course you can extend it by folding down the rear seats. But if you want to have a little bit more of an in-depth look at that sort of thing, then you can head over and check out the full review on the Skoda Enyaq. As I've already mentioned, the EQA is the smallest SUV that you can get from the Mercedes range. And as a result, it does feel a little bit more snug in here than the other two. But again, this isn't a direct comparison. This is more of an example of the types of family cars that you can get. Now, of course, this does command a slightly higher price tag, and this one in particular goes for about £45,000. And you get a sense of that with the large screen and the high amount of technology that you get in front of you. But I will say that some of the material quality isn't what I'd quite expect. So some of these materials down here are quite scratchy, as I've mentioned in the full review, and you can check that out on the Motors.co.uk YouTube channel. But the practicality is good. You've got cup holders here, nice deep door bins, deep bin in section there. And the same goes for the rear seats. I mentioned in the full review that the seats here have been given a quite cool concave design, which gives you more space for your knees. And I think that's going to be particularly useful if you've got larger or grown-up kids that you're going to be transporting in the back there. The boot is a nice size and it's reasonably square. However, there's a small load lip, which may make getting heavier items in and out a bit tricky, which is something definitely worth bearing in mind. I've actually been really impressed by the way that the MG5 drives. I think that it's really nice because it feels like it knows what it is. It's comfortable, it's relaxing, it's nice and easy to drive. And actually, if you're coming out of a petrol or diesel car, you're gonna find this one feeling less alien than you would with another EV on sale today. It should get about 250 miles from the long range versions. And that feels like more than enough for average commutes, daily driving, and it's only really those longer distance drives that is gonna be called into question. But what does shine through with this car is the level of comfort that you get. And as I mentioned in our full review, which you can check out on the Motors.co.uk YouTube channel, there is a slight lack of insulation, so you are finding that road and wind noise are coming through, but considering this car costs from about £30,000 and also a lot cheaper on the used market, I think that's a trade-off worth making. I just like that it's really relaxed, it's really easy. The steering isn't over heavy and the suspension isn't overly stiff and that's something that I find with a lot of EVs is that because of the additional weight of the batteries they try and stiffen up the suspension to compensate and in this car you've just got a little bit of roll, got a little bit of pitch and I think that's, that's actually quite pleasant. I don't mind it at all. I think as well if you've got the family in the car and they all want to be comfortable and traveling without getting jolted all over the place then this is going to be a very pleasant way to do it. I think the Enyaq isn't just a great example of a good electric car, I think it's a great example of just how far Skoda has come in recent years. This is a very pleasant battery powered vehicle that has loads of premium features and feels very upmarket to me anyway. The build quality is really good and the driving quality is good too. You get a little bit of wind and road noise, but by and large it's a quiet and comfortable place to be and I've, I've driven this car a heck of a lot and through all different types of driving it, it feels very pleasant indeed. I will say that it's quite spec dependent the Enyaq. This one that I'm in right now is an 80X Sportline and that means it's got all wheel drive and around 317 miles of range. Now unless you really need that all wheel capability I just trump for the regular Enyaq 80, which brings 333 miles of range, so that's quite a bit more. And I think if you get the non-Sportline, then it's gonna be more comfortable. This Sportline brings stiffened suspension and larger wheels, and what do they bring together? Firmer ride quality, and that's just something I'm not about, particularly in just a family-friendly electric car. The thing that you do get, of course, with the all-wheel drive version is loads of traction and plenty of acceleration. This car feels very nippy to drive and particularly away from the lights in between 0 and 30 miles an hour I'd say it'll surprise quite a lot of sports cars actually despite being quite large and not looking like it would do that but to drive it's super reassuring and it's not going to be tricky to get up to speed with if you're not used to driving electric cars it feels like you could be driving a Kodiak one of the Skoda's current largest seven seater albeit one with an electric powertrain I just think it's uh, quite exciting to think where Skoda could be in the next five years if it's already making EVs as good as this one. 
The EQA brings a premium feel to the driving experience. There's good levels of isolation for both the road noise and wind noise, so you're left to enjoy quite a quiet cabin, which is just what you want from an electric car because there's no petrol or diesel engine throwing away ahead of you and that tends to mask some of those smaller noises, so it's good that there aren't any of them here. There's a slightly firmer ride in the EQA than other cars that we've taken a look at, but a byproduct of this is that you get nice road holding and good cornering ability. I will say that at slow speeds, this does feel quite firm and through potholes and other imperfections on the road, it can tend to jump around a little bit. I will say that something that has impressed me in the EQA is the steering and the agility. It seems like the steering has been perfectly set up for urban or in-town use and even doing something as simple as a U-turn or a three-point turn is very simple because the steering has been set up just right. And then you couple that with the instant torque delivery that you get from the electric motors and you find yourself, you've got a car with quite an exciting driving experience and one which is really well suited to life in busier areas because you can nip in and out of traffic or gaps and you can pull away from junctions and you've always got plenty of performance right there. And then it's backed up with that great agility which I think is something that most people will really appreciate. I think what our video today shows is the sheer variety of EVs that are on offer today. Now, of course, all of these cars have a battery powered setup underneath, but the way they go about the rest of it is quite different. The MG5, of course, has a value focused orientation, but still is spacious and practical. And the Skoda is full of really cool features, but can easily slot into an everyday car's role. And then you've got the Mercedes on the end, which brings some of that high-end finish that you'd expect from a car with a three-pronged star on the front, but also has some nifty features that will make it easier for family use. It just shows that if you are thinking of making the switch to a battery-powered vehicle, then your options aren't quite as limited as they once were, and there's plenty to tailor to different moods, different needs, and different personalities too. And of course, if you want a slightly more in-depth look at each of these cars, then we do have full reviews available on the Motors.co.uk YouTube channel right now. Thank you for watching this Motors.co.uk three car review on the Skoda Enyaq, the Mercedes EQA, and the MG5. If you have enjoyed this video, please leave us a like below and let us know in the comment section what you think of these three cars and which one you would pick or if you're looking to make the switch to an EV car now. And remember to subscribe to the Motors.co.uk YouTube channel and hit that bell icon so you're notified every time we upload a new review.